Now, there is an escapement mechanism that has created the clock that has been called the craziest clock in the world because of the way the escapement worked. And there is some debate about how this clock came about because there are some very nice reproductions of a 1600 Leonardo da Vinci clock showing exactly the same mechanism. But it was patented in 1883 by two chaps called Clausen and Slater in Minneapolis, and it's said that they invented it and patented it as well. So you pay your money, you take your choice on that one. It's been called also the Ignatz clock, or the flying pendulum clock, or the Da Vinci clock. And Ignatz comes from the Crazy Cat comic because of how cracked it actually was. Now, I did have a look to see if anybody was actually doing these with 3D printers, and I found a couple, but you have to pay for the plans. So I thought, yeah, okay, I'm going to give that a go and design my own and stick them on Thingiverse. So, and if anybody wants a crazy cat, Ignatz, pendulum flying Da Vinci clock, <laughs> it'll be there. So let's get on with that. And that means, of course, going to Tinkercad to draw up some designs. And this is what I came up with. I guess it'll all make more sense if we print that off and start building it. But you'll also need some 6mm rod of some description and I use steel. I guess aluminium or brass would do just as well. So when you printed out the parts, the first thing is to put the drive mechanism together. The bevel gear goes onto the stand first, like that. Then the bobbin with the ratchet at the bottom goes on. Engage the ratchet. And then there's this clip that goes in there to hold it all together. Then we need to look at this part here. That bevel gear goes onto the end there, where you've got that indentation, and it's about two millimeters showing. That slots in here like that. Then this top clip fits on and gets glued in place. Then we take the swing arm and glue on that button onto the top. So that it's like that. Now in there is a four millimeter hole, and you'll see there's some string fed through and wrapped round. That's the way it is gonna hang. You'll also find two of these. One's got a hole all the way through, and that's the one you want from bottom plate, and there'll be two of these. The only reason for that is it wouldn't print on my printer as one piece, so we're gonna to have to glue that onto there, and then we feed this section through here and glue it onto the bottom there to make the bottom plate. So that it's like that. Like I say, we'll add that bit on in a minute. Now what you'll have, or you should have, is two rods at 250 millimeters long and six millimeters wide, and they go in those holes here. This, which is the arm that carries the pendulum, will go on there. And that should be very close, but just above this actual bar. And so you need to push that bar down and adjust it so that it's at the level of there, but very close to the pendulum. So that it's like that, with the pendulum arm just missing this upright bar here. Now this is the actual weight, it's got two holes in it. You feed the string through the central hole and then back out, knot it and pull it and fill that with, oh, just something with weight. You have nuts, bolts, lumps of anything really that will give that a little bit of weight. We need to adjust that a little bit because we don't want it pulling down too quickly or the pendulum will fly like crazy but we do want it to pull, in which case this needs to be nice and free, which is why we've been taking trouble to make it free. And we tie that onto here. Okay, now we can put the back piece on, which is this piece, and it just slides in there. And then when we've done that, we're ready to put the top plate on. The top plate is this bit here, and it goes that way around, because here you want to put a bearing. It's a skater bearing, so it's 22 mil by 7 mil by 8 mil. And here we want two pieces of steel rod or brass or aluminium or whatever it is. It's six millimeter, and they're 75 millimeters long. Now this is going to go on the top here. These rods come here somewhere. We're going to have to play around with it. Then when that pendulum comes around, it misses this bit, but will catch that bit, and that will cause it to wrap around that only needs to wrap around about three times and we need to play with that moving it up and down until it just catches and then wraps around here. So if we put all these bits together then we can play around with it a little bit. So the pendulum is just this bit of plastic with an M12 nut stuck in it and we're going to tie it on there. So like I say it comes around there, wrap that around three times and that's where you're going to tie your pendulum off right there. 
Now the lighter this pendulum is, the further out it's going to move as it swings around, the heavier the narrower that's going to be. So you have to play around with the weight a little bit so it doesn't bash in the back, but still catches here. And that means we need to be able to move that up and down in order for it to be able to do that. So we have a little bit of mucking about to get that weight right. And once we've done that, spot the glue on these bits of steel will hold them in place. So let's get that done and test it. Okay, so after several adjustments, there are three nuts on the pendulum now. You see I've removed these back bars. I'll alter that for the actual STL file. But you wind it by turning that ratchet, which pulls the weight up. And then you just let go. Okay, so we got it working and I thought it was very cool, so of course I've put the STL files on Thingiverse and the link for that is in the description in the bottom, should anybody want to give this a go. Now, when we were playing with it in order to get it working, then it was quite a lot of fiddling for weights and lengths of string, and I find that a bit disappointing. I'd like something that works just straight out of the box without you having to fiddle with it. Now, in order to guarantee this working, I don't know if you noticed in the video, this bar got shoved right the way up to the top there, and it worked just fine. So, it makes me question, is this actually doing anything? Do we need this whole tap section at all? And I find frequently that's the way it is when you're investigating things. If you build the model and play around with it, you can see how it responds. To me, this is something that somebody thought was a good idea and might actually not be necessary. So, of course, that's something else to look at, but you want to give that a go? Then it's there for you. Please feel free. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Oh. And please don't forget to like and subscribe.